lecture 11.9, Derivation of the Catenary Equation. This photo is a reproduction of the Jersey Lily. Judge Roy Bean was known as the Law West of Pecos, and this is a copy of his combination saloon and courthouse. This is located in Pecos, Texas. The original was in nearby Langtree, Texas. The curve for y equals cosh x is the average of two exponential curves. y equals e to the x and y equals e to the negative x. So here we have y equals cosh x. You have been told that a hanging cable or chain makes a shape called a catenary, which is a hyperbolic cosine curve. Like this. How do we know? Today we are going to derive the equation. We get to use our knowledge of physics. A cable has linear constant density, meaning that the weight of the cable is dependent on the length. We will simplify our calculations by aligning the lowest part of the curve with the y-axis. Now we will use our physics skills to analyze the forces on a point on the cable. Here's our point, x, y. The point x, y is a distance s along the cable from the lowest point. The tension in the cable at point x, y is in a direction tangent to the cable. So here we draw a vector representing that force. At the lowest point, the only tension is horizontal. If the linear density of the cable is W sub O, then the downward force on the section of cable between the lowest point and the point x, y is W sub O S. Note, the force of gravity is actually determined by F equals mg, but we are using W sub O as weight per unit length. The horizontal and vertical components must balance, so T sub 0 equals T times cosine theta. That is the horizontal component. And W sub 0 S equals T sine theta. That is the vertical component. We can eliminate T by dividing the two equations. W sub O S over T sub O equals T sine theta over T cosine theta. So tangent theta equals W sub O S over T sub O.
Since W sub O and T sub O are constants for any given cable, we can combine them into a new constant. A equals W sub O over T sub O. Tangent theta equals A S. But tangent theta at this point is the same as the slope. So dy dx equals as. We need to eliminate the arc length s, which is a variable, from the equation so that we can find an equation in terms of x and y. We can use ds squared equals dx squared plus dy squared. There's our old friend, the Pythagorean theorem. So ds equals radical dx squared plus dy squared. Taking the derivative of both sides and using the chain rule, we get d squared y over dx squared equals a ds dx. So d squared y over dx squared equals a times radical dx squared plus dy squared over dx. I'd like to get dx out from underneath the radical. So we have d squared y dx squared equals a times dx radical dx squared over dx squared plus dy squared over dx squared all over dx. So the dx in the numerator and the dx in the denominator cancel, giving us d squared y over dx squared equals a times radical 1 plus dy squared over dx squared. which is the differential equation of the catenary. We can solve this by doing two integrations. Introducing an auxiliary variable to simplify our calculations, we'll let p equal dy dx. So now we have dp dx equals a times radical 1 plus p squared. Separating variables, we get dp over radical 1 plus p squared equals a dx. and we integrate both sides. We have a formula, the integral of du over radical one plus u squared equals inverse cinch u plus c. So the integral on the left gives us inverse hyperbolic sine. and we have inverse cinch p equals ax plus c. Since p equals dy dx at x equals zero, where the slope is zero, we get inverse cinch zero equals a times zero plus c, where zero equals c. giving us inverse cinch p equals ax. Taking the hyperbolic sign of both sides, we get p equals cinch ax. But p is dy dx, so now we have dy dx equals cinch ax. We're almost there.
starting with dy dx equals cinch ax. We move the dx to the right side and integrate both sides, giving us y equals 1 over a cosh ax plus c. Some textbooks use this equation for the catenary. If we shift the catenary so that the y value at the lowest point is y equals 1 over a, the constant cancels out and we get y equals 1 over a cosh ax. You may have noticed that this is not the equation I gave you earlier. Remember that we decided to let a equals w sub 0 over t sub 0. We can just change our mind and let a equals t sub 0 over w sub 0. And the catenary equation becomes y equals a cosh x over a plus c. Choosing a new value for the constant of integration, we can rewrite the catenary equation as y equals b plus a cosh x over a. Notes. Since cosh 0 equals 1, the y-intercept at x equals 0 is y equals a plus b. Because a equals t sub 0 over w sub 0, it is logical that the y-intercept is higher and the cable sags less when the tension is greater or the density of the cable is lower.